welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. It's Wednesday the 10th of November 2021 and you're very welcome to join me this morning. If you've never been here before, I'm so glad you found me. If you're um, a regular viewer, welcome back. Um, I'm so glad we can spend some time together uh, this morning. Um, it is a dull, misty morning, so the lights are on. Wouldn't be a British podcast without a, a weather update. <laughs> and as usual, shining off my hair. But I hope you'll be able to, to see all the, the, the things I've been knitting and um, really enjoy this wee bit of time together. It could be a long one. So grab a coffee, grab a cup of tea, whatever. Maybe it's later on in the evening. Do whatever your tipple is. And uh, just... Um, Come on and we'll have a bit of a chat together. Um, you can find me um, on Ravelry as Crafty Mad Midwife on Instagram as Ruth Loves to Knit. And I have an email and that is Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com. And do feel free to get in touch with me on Instagram or Ravel or not Ravelry, on Instagram or email anytime. And I will endeavour to get back to you. Um, I'm not very... Um, mobile on Ravelry apart from buying way too many patterns. Anyway, um, if you have been following me on Instagram, you'll know the Rona finally caught up with us. You can be still hear in my voice a bit of a cold. I actually avoided it according to the PCR tests, but I managed to get the flu. So um, the kids have to be it tested three times a week to go to school and um, so they came up positive but were as right as rain. Um, I uh, came down with the flu and tested negative um, and then a few days later my husband tested positive so he's uh, still in lockdown and feeling really quite poorly. Not, you know man, <laughs> not very compassionate am I? Um, really just a flu just a bad flu but the tiredness is overwhelming um thankfully i was starting to sort of feel a bit better as he was starting to feel a bit worse so the kids have been <laughs> looked after okay but um i know some of you who watch my podcast suffer from chronic fatigue and my heart goes out to you it is just overwhelming there was some days um i would just fall asleep mid sentence nearly um but I did get lots of knitting done um and they um literally fell asleep mid row a few times but uh we're all all right everything's okay kids are back to school I say and um they test a negative again and uh I nearly feel like right we've we've had it now okay let's move on um and um I don't know I had exactly the same symptoms as my husband yet I tested negative so who knows who knows but we're all jabbed up and my poor dad um has it as well our trip to Ireland was cut very very short we thought it was the best thing to do um I didn't get to do any of the things that I planned to do um we saw the inside of my parents house we got hugs and we came home basically but my poor dad um got COVID too and but he's slowly recovering as well and we're very thankful for that nobody was hospitalized nobody um needed any extra care and um so send some love to my dad that he'll recover quickly so as i say the upside of being in isolation was um lots of knitting lots of guilt-free knitting <laughs> and um there's lots to show you uh so hope you'll Batten down the hatches, brace yourself for a long rambly one who knows where we'll go and we'll get started um i have one thing that um I want to say it first and it's about this little eh, no good at this this little lady here <laughs> this little bunny because I should bring her down let you see her and I had a little viewer called Porter hi Porter and his mommy watches my podcast Michaela she has the uh, sugar folk homemade podcast I did mention her last week she's such a lovely girl and he said oh Ruth's bunny is gone. Well, Ruth's bunny fell into the bucket. No bunnies were hurt in the recording of this podcast, but she's back. And Porter, I'm glad you noticed and you cared about my bunny. So thank you very much. And I I hope you and your mum um, are looking after each other. So that's my wee shout out to Porter. Um, 
The other thing is, um, you remember uh, finished on the 30th of September, uh, Fernanda of Little Monkeys and me and myself did a cal, a shawl cal, across the pond shawl cal and we handed out prizes and everything. Well, one person hasn't contacted me. I think one person didn't contact Fernanda as well. So she's redrawn. So go and check out her latest podcast because you might have won. And um, I have redrawn from Ravelry Finished Objects and the new winner, and I hope that you do get in touch, is Sonia Murillo. And I'll write that down. I'll write that on the screen. And her her Ravelry name is Sonia Murillo. And uh, congratulations, you're now the new winner. <laughs> I hope I will give you a month to um, contact me. And um, if you don't contact me, I might just keep it myself. No, I won't. <laughs> I will endeavour to, to pick someone else. But I hope that you'll watch and that you will um, get in contact with me. Uh, we did give you a month. We did. We did. And we mentioned, I mentioned it twice um, in different podcasts. So I feel it's only fair to um, draw again. So, Sonia, if you can get in touch with me, I will get that forwarded to you um, as soon as possible. So that's the um, administration. I'm looking down and looking down because... The way I'm feeling, if I don't have my notes and I don't look at my notes, I could all go tragically wrong. <laughs> um, yes, so that's that's the admin. So how are you all? I hope you're all doing well. I hope everybody is staying safe um, and I hope that uh, you're you're getting really into your knitting in this season. This is the knitter season, isn't it? OK, maybe in Australia it's... <laughs> It's getting hot for you and some parts of um, South America and places like that. But um, I knit all year round, whatever the weather. But I have to say I'm enjoying wearing the uh, knits again. And I should, I should say, um, I'm just wearing a cosy knit. It's my Felix cardigan. I think it's by Savory Knits. I've knit it, I knit it a long time ago um, in um, West Yorkshire Spinners Croft Aran. I can't remember the colourway, sorry. But it's just a lovely pull on, throw on. It does have buttons and button holes, but I rarely button it. I'm just button it over to to just now. Let's see. Oop. Just that lovely little detail. Um and just um rib at the bottom. Great wee cardigan. Um I would knit another one if I could be bothered. Um, it was it, obviously an iron, it knit up so quickly and it's a great one just to throw on when you're in the house or I've worn out obviously. Um, I think I said in another podcast I've started wearing a lot of dresses so it's really nice to just throw on over a dress and uh, yeah, it's just cosy. Um, the only thing is I can't remember whether I meant to do bracelet length sleeves or I just got fed up and... <laughs> bound off but I feel like I'm constantly pulling it down so maybe the next time that I block it out and wash it I'll maybe give it a wee extra stretch down but this West Shorts Skinner's Croft is lovely it's a hard wearing uh, workhorse yarn I definitely recommend it and it's got a nice little pink um, tinge to it there and yeah so that's the Felix cardigan um don't know I honestly can't remember much about it. I don't know if it's beginner friendly. I can't honestly remember. I'd knit it quite a while ago, as I say. But yeah, a lot of people have knit it. Um, and there's always a lot of help on Ravelry if you decide to do it. So that's what I'm wearing. Um, should we go on to FOs? So last time I showed you something I just literally was fresh off the needles. Hadn't blocked it. I hadn't done anything to it. And that is my burdock shawl by Folk and Fox. Um she um it was i blamed fernanda for this one <laughs> she recommended it and i'm so glad she did i absolutely loved it now the um pattern is for iron weight but i just could not get gauge i just couldn't get gauge in iron weight and actually in hindsight it would have been um massive and very um see-through maybe that's not the right word uh, forgive me if my brain is not working properly today or any day um but anyway i decided to do it in dk and she did say that was fine um i used a bit less than she said it would take on her on her um pattern but a bit less is better than more isn't it so this is my blocked and finished and there are photographs on um ravelry of this blocked and finished Burdock shawl. I absolutely love it. 
I didn't I didn't um, block out the oh sorry this, that's better I didn't block out this too heavily so I just really liked it and I think I remember saying last time that I got so excited <laughs> knitting it is applied border that I completely missed her um, instructions for the point to make it sit um, nicely there's um, oh probably half a page of instructions <laughs> sorry bad testing but I think it blocked out fine I don't um I did apologize to her but I think it's blocked out fine so that's the burdock shawl I did it in West Yorkshire spinners still smells gorgeous West Yorkshire spinners um I think if I look at that wall it gives me inspiration um West Yorkshire spinners Jacob's Declay fleece and then this one here is all centrum DK from uh, Midwinter Yarns. So it's quite a toothy yarn, but I have to say, when I wasn't feeling well, I that wore the heck out of this in bed. <laughs> like, um, Little Red Riding Hood's granny. <laughs> All I needed was my cap, and I just wrapped that round me, and I just was as happy as can be. And I think I'd said that I just could see I want to wear this in a cottage in the woods, sitting on my rocking chair, and I'm still holding out hope for my rocking chair. I've put um, my husband on to Gumtree looking for fun. <laughs> oh, getting old. But um, yes, I highly recommend it. I'm not sure when it's coming out. So just um, follow the, the Fox and Folk um, on Instagram and see how it goes. Beautiful detail down the spine and it's really gorgeous the picture of of it in the the um on ravelry is of her wearing it and it is massive and uh, right down to the back of her legs but she did point out that she's only five foot and she did do it in, in the iron weight so um yeah she definitely get good coverage with that so that's a uh, just a lovely shawl and just sounds so sheepy so that's that then the next one is actually uh, released it's another test knit and it is released this morning already so it is the excuse me <coughs> these are the farmhouse Christmas socks by lovely Angela McGowan Let's see we stocks um lovely Angela McGowan who is knitting on the farm she just did a little podette kind of thing this morning um, on Instagram to release these and um, I really recommend the patterns her purse pattern so I'm super excited for her. I do have both <laughs> maybe this will be my um, Instagram not Instagram YouTube thumbnail as they always pick awful ones for me it is a I did the 52 stitches for her. that's the one she asked me to do and actually I normally do 64 on a 2.5 millimeter uh, I do use nine inch circulars but actually for this the 72 is a great fit because with the color work it's just that wee bit neater on your ankle um she recommends 2.5 millimeter for the main sock and 2.75 for the color work and um, my first sock did feel a bit neat um, until I blocked it and it fits beautifully. So um, go and have a wee look. They're launched this morning. Perfect wee um, quick knit and to wear for the month of December. You can see the wee Christmas trees there. If you've not done colour work before, it's a perfect wee start. Um, her... Um, pattern is well set out well explained and she said if you've any problem getting it off Ravelry or if you've any problems at all just email her if you look if you go to to YouTube and you'll find her wee um, video um, or you can um, just I'm sure it's probably on the pattern details as well so I would highly recommend it um, she obviously you can do whatever heel you want it's a heel fat and gusset um, but this was the one in the... I knew I'd forget the name of this. I have partridge. <laughs> this is the one that was in her pattern. And then she just recommended that wee, that wee tint, tint of um, colour. So I used just over 50 grams for my uh, main colour. I used, I think, 13 or 14 for the trees and the green. And I used, well, 3 grams or something. Not even 2 grams for the wee stalks. 
And the yarn I used was, sorry, I've got it in a plastic bag, was this gorgeousness from Paw Play Yarn Co. And it's called Roses Are Roses are red, and um, I think I used 49 grams, something like that. Um, and this is a superwash merino nylon, and it's roses are red. I just wrote how much is left, so 50 grams left. So I think maybe another pair of socks will be knitted. Then, um, if you remember the barber socks, which went down a storm, I used um, this wee one. Um, for that because and I just thought I would use some of the leftovers and this is Clark and Ellie it's an American brand that I was given I was gifted and then just for the stalks or the stalks dear me the trunks of the trees I just had a this wee random mini I have no idea where it came from so if you want a lovely wee quick project but a very effective project um either for a gift or for yourself for the for the Christmas season sorry I'll stop rustling those now um, I really, really recommend these wee socks. Go over and support Angela on our first sock pattern. And as I say, there's loads and loads of help and um, lots of yarn choices or yarn possibilities on her wee um, YouTube video that she did this morning. So I think those will be very cheery. Um, if you've been a long-term watcher of this podcast, you remember I did the... Um, a, like a real Christmassy um, shawl from Shutter Monkey Designs for testing it. Um, it's out too with lovely beadwork and everything. Oh, I'll put the I'll put the name of the shawl on the um, I want to say Christmas holidays shawl, but that's probably not right. And um, so I'll look just the part with that on my shoulders and these on my feet. And sure, won't I look gorgeous? <laughs> so Angela, I'm well impressed. They're gorgeous. Well done, and I'm excited for your wee venture into designing and I hope they go really well for you so there you go so that's hers just this morning then if you again if you've been watching this um podcast you'll know that I have been knitting a top for my mum um go way back to I don't know what episode um the title is disaster darling um and you'll see that I originally started knitting it for myself it had, let's just say it had uh, a meeting of a dog and a pair of scissors. All went wrong. But in the interim, my mum said, would you be able to maybe knit me one of those? So it's finished. And um, I have always had trouble saying the name of it. And lovely um, Ali of the Thoughtful Knitter podcast. If you haven't watched her podcast, go and check her out. She is just... The opposite to me probably she is so calm and her Scottish accent and her lilt and she likes to keep her podcast short um but anyway she messaged me on Instagram with a voice message and told me how to pronounce this so it's Spanish nope I can speak Bangla and I can speak English just about none another language and if I say this wrong I have practiced so this is the Reina de Picas. Did I get it right? <laughs> it's the Reina de Picas. There you go, I'm not saying it again. By Valentina Bogdanova. Loved, loved, loved knitting this. Um, as I said, I think I said before I tried I started to knit the written what version um for the uh, lace, completely lost, followed the chart, and it just flew off the needles. And I'll show you the I tried it on my mum with, you know, cables and everything still on it when we were in Ireland and um, it fits beautifully um, and I measured for the length and I finished it. So there's a still a stitch marker to show the back, but it's all blocked. It's been sitting. I have to flatten it out before I give it to her. And that's it's all blocked but it's been folded <laughs> so I'll have to I'll have to set it out beautifully for her whenever that's the back um it fits her beautifully she did want the neckline a little wider so I hope I've blocked that out um wide enough um and she's chuffed a bit with it I brought it back with me because we didn't stay as long as we planned to stay um I didn't get it finished there we brought it back with me and I finished it off and um hopefully it's the right length 
um, but I still have oh, a good ball, a ball and a half left if I need to rip back and do it a bit longer. So they are planning to come to stay with us at Christmas. Um, so mom, you have to look suitably surprised and amazed when you open your Christmas present. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll have forgotten that I even knitted it for you by that stage. Um, and hopefully um, that'll be a really, really lovely wee um, addition to my mum's wardrobe. She wears a lot of the wee short sleeve fine knit jumpers, but I definitely recommend that pattern. It's very, very well written. Um, it's written and charted, but as I say, I find the chart much easier to follow and uh, no dogs or scissors were near this jumper. And I knit it in Sirdar, Sirdar sn Snuggly cash merino silk so it feels delicious and it is in the colorway puss in boots i actually bought this yarn for a completely different project uh, but that was what mum decided on so it's great to i love that you can use it um for something different and it's coming 50 gram balls and 170 meters per ball and i think i used about five and a half for my mum's size she was the third size and um yeah Give it a go if you think you can. No Sleeve Island. Sorry, there's something in my eye. No Sleeve Island at all because you've knitted to here and that is all you have to do. Um, Can't recommend it enough. So you'll be glad that that's off the needles because that came up time and time and time again. Mostly because I didn't want to keep knitting on it if it wasn't for my mum. If it didn't, you know, it didn't fit my mum. Um, but no, she tried it on for me and everything and it fits really well. And the last finished object, you see, I've been doing a lot of knitting, a lot of sleeping, a lot of knitting, <laughs> um, is um, one that I just decided to, another test knit that I just decided to sign up for and got accepted for because I have a real problem with test knits and I need an intervention, but I just love doing test knits and it's for one of my favourite designers who is Tiff Nealon. And this is what I signed up for, the Sun and Soul Wrap. And it was in DK and I got it done in about four or five days. <laughs> um, and this is the finished object. Get the right side and this is, this is it. You see that looks, I don't know why I haven't maybe blocked that out well enough. It looks a bit, not happy with that. I'll block that out a wee bit better I think. These are slip stitches. Then some lovely squishy garter. You can imagine how squishy this is because of the garter, more slip stitches, and then a lovely pico bind off. And it just, I wore it on, we got our freedom <laughs> from isolation on Saturday and myself and my daughter went out for breakfast or brunch by the time we got out the door and I wore it and it was just so cozy, just, Oh, it smells gorgeous too. I miss, are you, are you a yarn and um, sniffer? It's funny, um, I've said hundreds of times in this podcast that I used to live in Bangladesh and everything smells a bit musty there. I'm just, it's not a criticism, it's just a fact because it's so hot and humid. And um, I think since then I smell the clothes coming out the washing machine. I smell my yarn. I smell, I still appreciate a beautiful fresh smell. Um, but anyway, these were, this was a lovely knit. Um, I'm not sure when it's coming out. It's a test knit, as I say. But I used lots of yarn. It's a real stash buster. But in, if I knitted again, I would I would change a few things. But obviously, for a test knit, you knit. You have to knit um, exactly what's on the page, which is fine. So, just get rid of that. Let me see what do we do. Oh, sorry, dropping things. Okay, so my first colour. Right, not Russell. Sorry about the Russell. My first colour was this gem. I had two of these and it's from um, West Greenloft Yarns. It is, um, it just says April Yarn Club. I got this from a D-Stash, um, Tatty Cat Designs D-Stash, quite a wee while ago. She had two of them and I bought both. Um, she has a very good D-Stash and she takes offers is all I'm saying and I had two of these and that was my main my MC my main color and then um hang on to we see 
don't want to give too much away but so that was my main color it knitted up absolutely stunningly beautiful and then the next color excuse me was um need about 10 hands to show these things was this beauty and this is <clears throat> gardener's cottage yarn lovely cas i bought this a long time ago and it is springtime in the snow and then i followed on with this one and that is rainbow fusions love rainbow fusions and it's celebrate with cake it was um i think it was her birthday or either her birthday or the anniversary of her shop and that was the that was the colorway that she did and then the last one is um mothy and the squid this was given to me in one of my wool swaps um lots of lovely colors um mothy and the squid and it's industrial accident now obviously as i said i knit it as is no problems great pattern i'll just put these back in so they don't roll all over the floor but look how much yarn i have left so in hindsight she the recommendation was um four colors and um four ply fingering weight yarn held double but in hindsight i think i would use three and i would finish off with the, the main color again um obviously you can do that you can uh, any pattern is just really um a recipe so for and for something like this where you don't need to be worrying too much about stitch counts and everything i would definitely um try and use up all the yarn yeah although all of those could be used for socks so i'm not going mean, not going to go wrong but i love this the squish factor is amazing um such a quick knit i think four days did me um big needles i think size five needles and um my obsession with tiffany <laughs> I think it's getting to stalker level as you'll see in a minute um she might be calling the police for <laughs> restraining order um and um but yes that was i really enjoyed i really enjoyed knitting that so that's that so that is my that those are my finished objects the burdock shawl the farmhouse christmas socks the reina de picas uh, by valentina bogdanova and the sun and soul wrap by uh tiffany and hand hand knits tiffany and yes tiffany and hand knits so i did all right the upside silver lining you have to find one of not being well was lots of knitting um and guilt-free knitting at that because um i just decided sorry i just decided that i was going to rest and the kids were off school in isolation and they had schoolwork to do um freezer thankfully had food in it Tesco's delivery service came and sure aren't we great not a complaint we have to we have to be very thankful so I'm gonna take a drink of water please take please pause if this is stressing you one of the things that Ali the thoughtful knitter says um people with anxiety or um fatigue and things um need a need a shorter podcast but please feel free to pause my podcast at any time and come back later please do not fight on through and um, that's the nice thing about about youtube wherever you finish you can just start up again and um, never stress never never worry just watch it in bits and um but i hope you do get some support and some encouragement out of it okay so whips well if you could see this desk beside me here i have as many whips as i have finished objects sorry and i have other whips but they haven't been touched <sighs> sorry i'm not sorry it's my knitting and i'll cast on if i want to it makes me happy not harming anybody um i'm using moustache and um do you know what we're all like i'm not a monogamous knitter i've never claimed to be i enjoy having a wee bit of this and a wee bit of that and a wee bit of the other and i get them finished eventually um so no guilt no apologies here and if I can encourage you to have as many whips as possible, you go for it. <laughs> so the first one is um, a test knit. 
I had started it last uh, time and it kind of went in the back burner because although I did a lot of knitting, the brain power wasn't there. Um, it was that was the nice thing about the um sun and soul wrap. It is such a simple pattern. It's oh it just fell off the needles and it was perfect for my solidified brain for those few weeks I wasn't feeling well. But this one is the sorry, let's get a picture which doesn't give everything away. It's for under the olive tree knits. Gem. I have knit I have tested it for her before and I've knit a lot of her patterns. I think I've said before, if you're looking for a one skein shawl pattern for that special one skein beautiful beautiful skein that caught your eye and you couldn't resist it now you're thinking what am I going to do with that she has really got some beautiful um patterns that you could just um use that beautiful skein for but this is her this is the one I'm doing so it's got um everything really <laughs> it's a, just a beautiful pattern I am um almost finished the um this bit here almost finished that bit as I say it was put on hold for quite a while and um, Jem does like you to check in every week when you're doing her um test knits but I just had to say I've uh, I'll get it finished not not due to the 4th of December so there's plenty of time but um yeah I just some of them some of the testers have already finished but I'm afraid I I fell but I've got back onto it again um well I thought I'd got back onto it again until I realized last night I'd done four rows wrong so I had to take those back but this is how far I have got. So it is just beautiful. Oh, my yarn is all caught up. Hang on to take it out of the bag. That's it. So professional, aren't you? So it's because I had to rip out that um, it's, all it's all tied around. <laughs> but um, maybe if I lift this up. Oh, show you the back sides, not what you want to see. So this, these are slip stitches. Beautiful effect, really gorgeous. Um, and this is the start of it. It's obviously all curled, but they blocked out. It is squishy, squishy, squishy. Lovely. And then once I finish this, you start a lace. It is charted and written. Um, I'm not again I'm not sure I presume December maybe sometime it'll come out now this is coming out as like it's almost a brown but it's this is just a wee mini I think I said last time I wasn't sure if it worked but it's worked great um and um so this is just a wee 20 gram mini and then this is this is what the lace this color here is what the lace is gonna be in but it's coming out on the camera brown but it's not it's a gorgeous um Nearly fifth, it's all I've got left of the. But it's a really beautiful, whiny. See, it's not brown. That's that is what it looks like. That's the right. Um, I totally and this is the this is the main color, with that wee bit of contrast that goes with, that. And uh, these are from Stuart Yarns. Let me get the, labels. And I totally murdered, the names of these because. They're, I'd say, probably Gaelic. I'd be totally wrong. So it's Stuart Yarn. She's up in Inverness. If you want to hear how to pronounce these right, go to the Crea Bea podcast. And she at least... Let me see, get these these white, the right purple one. So this is the purple one. Um, She says at least one of them the right way in her beautiful Scottish accent. So the purpley mulberry one is... Stag Paul I blood there. <laughs> Sorry. As I said, I speak two languages and that's it. Um I would like to hear these said properly, I have to say. It's the Pitter Batter base, 85 uh, superwash merino, 15% uh, percent nylon, and they're both the same base. And this is Tarmigan. Is that what she said? I can't remember. But if you want to hear that in her latest podcast, she says it. Now, I have to say that this one has been quite splitty. Beautiful yarn. It's not a criticism, but they're both the same um, base and this, the purpley one is perfect. So maybe it's just 
one of those things absolutely knittable don't get me wrong but i've had to i've split it quite a few times um it's come it's knitting up beautifully though so i mean it's not really a complaint but i'm just saying it has slowed me down a wee bit uh keep going into the <laughs> in the middle of the stitch um but yes i recommend this these two are beautiful i bought these whatever um i think there was a sale on so it was very 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 good price and hopefully i will get this finished before the next podcast really look forward to wearing this actually because it's just because of this is sort of like a double knit lots of slip stitches it's just a squish factor is just gorgeous just show you so i have one more of these to do and then that's me finished um before the lace starts and then as i say the lace will be in this um color here so yeah really really love the pattern um very impressed and gems patterns if you get maybe a couple of mistakes that's the maximum and that's what test knitting's for you are there to help the designers pick up the wee mistakes and it's like anything you can read and read and read and think you've got it right and then your fresh pair of eyes just see i think there's been one mistake in the whole pattern and it's been fixed already and that's in my lovely crafty clegs creations bag from lovely jeanette and i uh, just love it. it um liberty fabric i think really really gorgeous perfect size for that for that shawl so that's my first finished object now it's, I don't know what to do about this one <laughs> I'm gonna, can you help me please okay so this was another one that was perfect for when I wasn't feeling well because the start of this the first half of this right I'll show you the it's the Giselle shawl I've shown you it numerous times fingering weight and then uh, mohair I have knit once with mohair. I did the, um, oh, what do you call it? Everyday slouchy beanie. Never been worn. Um, I've said I didn't like mohair, blah, 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 until my lovely local yarn shop, the Woolly Beater in Oakhampton, um, the owner of the shop, Laura, showed me this mohair and it is just a delight. But maybe I have bitten off more than I can chew. I'm not sure. My daughter asked me the other day if I'd ever knit anything and I had to give up and wasn't able to do it. And I, there has been things. And I, I don't know whether it's this is because of my lack of brain power at the minute or I just need to sit down and concentrate on it. It's charted now, obviously, for the latest chart, which isn't a problem, but it's not fully charted. It's only and there's a lot of, I think, guesswork. There's no other... Um, projects and Ravelry other than the designers um but I've put it over to the side so obviously not to break this this was a dream oh I'm even mid-row that's awfully professional this was a dream <laughs> when I wasn't feeling well 300 and that's the wrong side 300 and some 20, 15 stitches increased oh this is so bad because I have left at mid row I've never done that before anyway oh so it starts and it goes to a square you increase every row so that was obviously mind numbing and any other time that probably would have driven me mad um but it was perfect whenever you weren't feeling well and then I started the lace and you can see the lace is starting to see you can see that, that there is but it's one of those patterns and maybe I'm just used to being spoon fed. It's one of those patterns, you know, if there's not enough stitches, just knit to the end. If there's not, you know, and things like that. So I, I really, really want it. I think it's gorgeous. This wool is beautiful. Um, You can obviously see the design is coming, but I am not in the headspace to do it at the moment. So that might be put over just for a wee while just for a wee while till I get some other things that are off the needles and I will come back to that whenever I don't feel so zombied, zombified. So the yarn that I am using is, and I've used, I used every single last. I think I actually had to knit two rows um, in another wee mini of this. I did, it's, I did know that it would maybe run out um, and it's fine. So the gray is love hand dyed. And it is um, 75, 25 and 50 shades of black. So I use two skeins of that. And then the mohair is 
Katia. Ugh, fiddlesticks. Katia Concept It Aria. And it is Baby Alpaca and Super Kid Mohair. And the colour is 118. And it is lovely, lovely yarn to it with her Katia. Um, I have no complaints about the yarn, but you just, you know, it's well, for me anyway, it's not podcast watching knitting. Um, and all the other thing was, um, I, I always use wooden needles. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Oh, I couldn't get the mohair off the wooden needles. It just wouldn't even slide. So I had to go metal. I just thought, right, we'll get, get ones that everybody raves about. And I had to get Chai Goo 3.5 millimeters. Um, and I'm using metal needles. And I think that's another reason I'm maybe not that excited about it. But I really want the finished product. I really want the finished shawl, so I am going to do that, but maybe not for the next couple of weeks. And that's in my lovely bag by Bird Street UK. Now, Bird Street yarn, is it? I've had it for a long time, um, and it's a great size too. Yes, I have a, a project bag problem as well. Then the next one has been pulled out of storage. You've um, seen this. I had started knitting this way before summer and, and then I stopped in the summer because it was such woolly wool um, and I've got back into it again. But it's uh, four ply, so it's not going to come off the needles <laughs> that quickly. It is the Norbakken cardigan by Skeen Deer Knits. Lovely Ellie. It's a steaked cardigan. It's my f well, I was actually saying to somebody the other day, oh, it's my first steak. I was ahead of my time, honestly. I forgot that when I was in Bangladesh in the winter, we, there was, there's a few months when it does cool down, I knit several wee vests, wee um, woolly vests for the children in the villages and I stick them. What? How did I? I don't, even, I don't even know how. I remember using a sewing machine and cutting. I remember that now. And um, I don't know what it's like now, but it used to be that when the aid organisation sent out, you know, all the charity shop, jumpers and stuff they used to rip them out because they would send stuff with holes in they would send stuff that you know just wasn't wearable and um they would rip them out and they would sell the balls of wool <laughs> the ripped out balls of wool at the side of the road and you could go and buy the balls of wool so i remember doing like a wee um color work <laughs> who was i um because i didn't knit really when i was there because it was too hot most of the time i did i was a prolific um cross stitcher but and um, my poor mum has cross stitch all over her house that I did. Um, but I just I was just reminded of that by a friend the other day that I knit these wee jumpers for the children and wee children who were so cold in the villages and um took them round and I remember using a sewing machine to do steaked I just knit them in a tube and did steaked armholes. There you go. But all that to say, I haven't done anything since. So, and you know, if you follow Ellie at all, you know she loves a good steak. Um, so this is the Norback and Cardigan. Oh, everything is tangled, of course. I think this is Ellie's favourite colour as well. Don't look too carefully. Those two are mistakes, so I'm going to just duplicate stitch the right um thing in. Is that the front? Yes, that's the front. So obviously the colour work's done ages ago and I'm just knitting down and um, I had knit, quite, I knit the body but I gave stopped and I've started on the sleeves because I'm not actually sure. It's quite a crop cardigan. I'm not a crop girl. And so I thought I'll knit the sleeves and then see how long I can do the body. But obviously it's four ply fingering and um, so it's round and round and round and round, round. I'm on decreases and things like that but this will take a wee while. But um, I just work away at it. So that's the note, and you can see the. Hopefully, you can see the middle bit for the steak. So that'll be interesting to do, once the time comes. Um, let me see the yarn I'm using. So I'm using phenol PT two, Rama phenol PT two. It's quite um a woolly wool in colorway um o four nine seven, and I have not been able to source any more of that. I got that from Zolda Teague before she shut. Uh, oh no, maybe in 2019. I got it as soon as the pattern came out. So um, I've had it for a while and so I won't be able to get it. But I've still got one, two, 
four balls of that left. So, and I just used a creamy white for the, um, for the color work. And if it comes to it, I can always do like a rim, you know, at the bottom of the cuffs or something like that with that if I need to. Um, but I just chug away at that. Um, very nice. It'll, it'll be lovely to wear whenever I've finished. So that's the Norback in Cardigan by Ellie. So that's back and that's in my Mrs. Brown's bag that my lovely friend from Canada sent me quite a while ago. Uh, I need all the big bags at the minute because I'm doing jumpers and I'm a big jumper. <laughs> right, so the next one, sorry if you want to run away, is another Tiff Nealon. I think it's one of her most recent jumpers, that um, sweaters that she's brought out. Um, I, this is in black and white, so I might stick a picture up there. There's been, hopefully, um, I've been told that I don't put them up for long enough, so I'll put them up for a bit longer. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Um, hopefully you've seen a, a picture of it, but that's the just black and white. It's DK, so knitting the four the four ply one and then the DK one. This has flown off the needles. Um, I'm using. Get a ball. Hooky, hooky, hooky. So I'm using Witchcrafty Lady. This gorgeous, it's not coming up. It's a wee bit redder brown than that. Um, I think it's chocolate, I think is the colourway. And then this one from Midwinter Yarns. No, I'm not going to even try it. Is it Snelden? It's um, from Made in the Faroe Islands. Pure new wool. And it's a DK as well. Uh, 260 metres. So there's... 250 in this and 260 in this so great yardage and that's the two colors I put together there's like a wee white thing through this one now I thought this was going to be so cute and I am a child of the 60s oh before I forget this is um I love this yarn I have a lot of this yarn from Witchcrafty Lady and just in the last couple of weeks she has put out her little shade cards best thing just brilliant it must be time consuming but it's just brilliant because no unless you have some sort of ridiculous setup for showing things you know it's it's very hard to get the right color and she has by hand done these shade cards and she sent me a lovely wee stitch marker too and so have I mean it was two pounds something to get these but they're brilliant because such I re rarely buy um you know certainly not sweater quantity of um hand dyed dk yarn so it's mostly commercial or you know thereabouts and this is just such a really i wish i could get the right color for this but anyway so that's a really handy wee thing to have and i just will be going back to that time to now i'm a child of the 70s where there was a lot of brown but i just wonder is this just too much brown <laughs> this is my um obviously not blocked this is my sweater. Oh, it's turned looking all right. I'm starting to think that maybe it's gone mad. Again, it's readier than this. And I've nearly the sleeve finished. I always do the sleeve so you don't have to toss and turn to get the whole sweater. Um, and that's just a wee, I don't know if it's a wee pull or something. And the design of the sweater is a really, really long cuff. So the cuff will go down to about here. And that's just a pleasure to knit, an absolute pleasure to knit. So hopefully that'll be well on its way as well. And this vibe of my 70s uh, girl. Very, very easy colour work. I'm really wanting to get more into colour work um, this year. Um, I think I've, one of the patterns I've chosen has been maybe a wee bit ambitious. I should be show you that the next time. Um, so I'm really thinking about what colours we'll put together for it. Um, but I think maybe it could be another one where um, I've bitten off more than I can chew. So that's the uh, brush strokes uh, sweater by um, Tiffany Lan, and it's in my humongous bag by uh, So Can Jo. Just perfect for this, and it's filled to the to the brim. Uh, but there's like eight skeins of yarn in that plus the jumper. So and this is a lovely mustard. Colors really aren't showing up well. Sorry about that. And then last but not least are a pair of socks. Now, I had a lovely viewer contact me just to say she enjoyed the podcast. It's always lovely to get those kind of comments and to say that, you know, she was 
pleased that I knit for other people and that she just knit for herself. Totally justifiable. I have no problem with that. I love a bit of selfish knitting. Um, and she is a single mum. She is um, has two children, two gorgeous children. So she is more entitled to knit for herself. But she was just saying that she's nobody to knit for her anyway. So, and she'd seen my socks, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, it contrived that I said I would knit her a pair of socks. So, Tony, if, you, if you're watching and you don't want to see, turn away, but it's a pair of socks. Um, she gave me what colour she likes, but I'm not sure that she meant to have them all in the one sock. So I've knit the first one. If you don't like them, Tony, just let me know. and <laughs> They're not going to waste. And this is, this is the first one done the shadow wrap heel that's definitely my favorite heel now um there that's probably that's true to color so the first one's done the second one the ribbing is done but i haven't been to knit grip obviously so i haven't really got um knitting greatly on them but you'll get them before christmas i promise tony um trying to find the label these were another yarn that was given to me in, a, in the wool swap this is Ov Ovis uh, yarns. It's not helpful, is it? And the colour weight is bag end and it's 80% um, BFL, 20% nylon. So that's just a wee pair of socks in my wee So Yarn Alicious snap bag. So, Tony, those will come to you at some point. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's well, it's a hard working mummy. That's a, so, that's all my whips. <laughs> They're all, they're all being worked on. They're all getting some love. And um, I can't wait till some of them are finished. Just that Giselle Shaw. I think it's going to go in the naughty corner just for a wee while. Till I get my head space. Um, it's absolutely doable. Because I think once I get up the, once I get up the lace a wee bit. I can see where I do my yarn overs and everything. Um, and I've put the chart a bit bigger as well for my poor eyes. So we'll see what comes out of that. If any of you have any hints, tips or anything, that'd be great. Oh, did I say the Giselle Shawls by Cami Jo Knit? She's, um, she does a lovely podcast. She just started dyeing yarn as well. She is, I want to say, finish. Um, yeah, so that'll get done eventually. And then this is where I need my intervention. <laughs> I signed up for another test knit and just got accepted this morning. I will put a picture here it's another Isabel Kramer it's a forager light she's already got the forager normal out um but this is um a um four ply version of it and um I was accepted this morning I know I know I know I have a problem but hey you know um it's got a really long date it just doesn't have to be finished to January so there's no pressure and I have chosen my yarn, which is this. Oh, that's a lovely. It is Jameson and Smith jumper weight, so it's quite a quite a thin. Um, I've had this cone for ever and a day, wondering what to do with it. Um, it's a lovely. I don't know what color color weight it is. It says shade thirty eight. It's a five hundred gram cone. Loads on this. I started a little swatch, three point five needles. See, oh, you can't see. There's a nice home. Pull that out would help. I haven't finished the swatch, obviously. There's like oranges and yellows and everything in it. I think that's going to be lovely. And I just love. I love using cones because you have no ends. It's am amazing being able to knit a whole jumper and never have to sew in an end <laughs> until you're finished. And that's what I'm going to be using for the Forager Light. And as I say, it's got a very long um, date for having it finished. So we will just work away on that and get that done. And that, as they say, is that. <laughs> now, let me see what time it is. Oh, 54. Sure, listen, it's going to be a long one. I've had quite a bit of incoming. If this isn't your thing, I just love to see people's stuff that's coming in. Um, some of it, very little of, it, of it's bought. Um, I did say last time that I'd had my wool swap and that I would show you it. So I just want to quickly, quickly go over that. So I got from um, lovely Vicky. 
who is a tiny teal handcrafted and she's a yarn dyer go and check she has the most beautiful really muted colors really uh, just really gorgeous go and check that out tiny teal handcraft i'll put the the details in the box in the description below and she sent me uh, the most sorry it's in a plastic bag the most gorgeous bag of goodies it's always exciting i sent to her and she sent to me which isn't always the way that the yarn swaps work she sent me a box of pocket tea I haven't opened it because it was in my craft room and in hindsight probably it would have been absolutely ideal when I wasn't feeling too well. Um, I love herbal teas and coffees and things. She sent me um, Lemon, Lavender and Poppy Seed Secret Salt Society Mineral Bath Infusion. It smells divine. Then the yarn. So I'm going to open this. Oh, the mess. The mess in here. So she sent me sorry for these little lovelies and these are Venus colors Serena if you watch um, Jeanette of Crafty Clegg's uh, creation she is knitting her uh, dishcloths um, that the one that comes out every month in this and she read out the wee back the wee thing and it says this yarn is hand dyed and Balled by women from economically depressed rural area of South Africa. The sale of this product has empowered and brought economic benefits to their community. Hand dyed yarn gives your garment a unique marble defect. Colour fast made in South Africa. I just love anything that helps somebody out. The colourway is mint and it is, oh, just like cashmere soft. And I have four balls of it and there is... 111 meters per 50 grams so like that'll do a lovely wee project so that's something different i've never had that before it's funny i've never heard of it before and then i saw it on um jeanette's podcast then these two lovelies these are one is her own and one is um, a different tiny tail handcraft that's her wee label you can see the ww um and it's one of a kind tealish 100 <laughs> percent merino dk that's not well maybe showing up a wee bit greener and there's but there's lovely like different tails through it you can see yes there you go and then um this one is solstice yarns and it's nimue four ply fingering merino 15 percent silk 10 percent cashmere and it's called incoming storm maybe it was a premonition and that is it's not it's not showing up as beautiful as it is i mean can you imagine silk and cashmere gorgeous then um she sent me these two when again this is her own and it's this is on her website this one yeah that's better and it's called tequila sunrise deluxe socks 366 meters so those will definitely be socks and then this beauty is mulled wine um although there's a little there's a little bit of the mold in there so i don't know whether i would do those two together um and that's mold wine and again those are both from her own hand dyed yarn and then just a couple of other wee extras lovely wee notebook oh the potential i think it actually has that yeah it has um squares in it to do your oh i wonder i wonder should i use that for my giselle shawl to put out the to get it into my head of how to do the lace then these are just big blue mama stitch markers and those brilliant and then another gorgeous wee notebook beautiful so that was my uh wool swap from um vicky thank you very much vicky then lovely linda from nena knits the for the fun of knit podcast i mentioned her last week I won this gorgeous skein of yarn. Over the moon yarn. Colour rate is refraction. Electron sock. Superwash merino nylon. 400 metres. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Oh, over the moon. She's in Canada. So that don't even want to tell you what she paid for postage. Thank you so, so much, um, Linda. But not just that. No, no. She sent me, sure I've got them all. Yep, let's put this back down. 
she sent me these wee minis. Oh. One of those is Timber Yarns with the middle one, which I've heard so much about on different Hue Loco. Never in my, my my life did I think I'd have one of those. And then she knows. <laughs> and then look at these beauties. Look at those. <gasps> Song and lyrics, Tough Love Sock. Is that the, I don't see the, the maker on this. Anyway, and they're all um, Rhapsody, Ballad, Quiet Time, Lo-Fi and Libretto. And that just makes something beautiful. They're 20 grams at least. That just, thank you so, so much, Linda. I mean, oh gosh, over and above. <laughs> really, really, really spoiled. Thank you. I really, I don't take that for granted. And um it was uh, actually that was sitting waiting for me when I got home from uh, the, the ridiculously short trip to Ireland when I was feeling just oh that was rubbish and that was sitting waiting for me so that just really picked me up and then I've been watching Stitches and Jack's um podcast my lovely friend Karen and um she had been to Yarndale and she had picked up a skein of yarn and it's it's this one here for ply West Shorter Spin uh, Spinners signature and the colorway is Nigel and my husband's name is Nigel now my husband is not net worthy bless him I love him dearly but he is not net worthy at all he's a very very patient yarn husband but I thought I'm going to knit him a pair of socks but in hindsight I really don't think these are his colors so I'm just going to knit myself something he wouldn't wear socks like that he's a black sock boring black sock man but I just got a kick out of having a skein of Nigel <laughs> Um, I noticed they had, um, at one point they had um, badges and things, but I, I missed those. But uh, yeah, so I have a skein of my husband. <laughs> and then last but not least, couldn't resist this. And just thought to pot, I'm going to treat myself. And I got, sorry, I st uh, yes, another project bag from lovely Jeanette at Crafty Craig's Cre Creations, Creations, Creations. And this is Catherine Hill in Froome in Somerset. And I just thought, well, it's not just Christmassy. I can use that till March. And it is her usual quality. Beautiful. And she sent me a lovely wee, uh, all lined. Look at the line and even. Beautiful. She sent me a lovely wee stitch marker too. Um, you always get a wee extra. And Christmas tea as well, but that's long gone. Oh. Um, there you go. So that was my incoming goodies. Two, two bought and the rest gifted spoilt rotten and um hope you enjoyed those too oh gosh this is a long one right we're done with the we're done with all the nitty goodness but i do want to share like i always do at the end of my podcast but maybe a wee bit different this week um i thank you so much for the lovely comments when i shared my testimony last week um but just wanted to share something a wee bit different um with you this week if this isn't your thing if you're not into anything um with anything that's spiritual or whatever um and you don't want to hear um what i want to share from god's word uh, but you never know might be a wee bit different this week um i'll say goodbye to you now and um just keep on knitting stay safe look after yourself and um till i see you again god bless so i wanted to do something a wee bit different um and you know in the uk anyway um Tomorrow on the 11th, the 11th day, the 11th hour, no, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, um, we remember those who died in world wars, those who sacrificed their lives in wars since then, um, and it's Remembrance Day, and then again on Sunday, we have Remembrance Sunday, and you know, I, I'm really hoping technology worked, because I want to show you a few photographs, and I'm hoping here... <laughs> <laughs> there'll be a picture of my grandfather and my grandfather was called Samuel Shaw my maiden name was Shaw and um it's my dad's dad and um we named my son after him I always told my granny if I ever had a son she was long gone with the time I had my son that I would name him after my grandfather and he and my granny Shaw moved from Northern Ireland to Scotland um, because they couldn't they needed work the times were hard and so many people from Ireland moved away and they moved to Scotland um, but um, then World War II broke out 
So my grandfather was called up. He was drafted. And if he'd been in Northern Ireland, he wouldn't have been called up. Let's not get into the politics of that. But he wouldn't have been called up. But because he was living in Scotland, he joined the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders. He went off to war in a kilt. <sighs> he was killed in May 1944, just before the end of the war. Almost got there, almost got to the end, and the sniper took him out. He left my granny and two boys. I hope that um, photographs are circulating through here as I'm talking. My granny was living in Scotland with no family support. My And she had a son who was four, and um, that's my dad. And her other son, Desmond, was two. And that was before the days of NHS, before the days of benefits and all the rest of it. So she decided to move back to Northern Ireland um, to have family close by, by. You can imagine the hardship. The breadwinner was gone. She had two small children and she moved back to be in the bosom of her family. She was an amazing woman. She, I was her only granddaughter, so maybe I was a bit biased. Um, she, my, grand, my grandfather, my granda Shaw, was buried in Monte Cassino in Italy. So she never, ever got to visit his grave. She never, ever got to see his resting place. Some of my family, my dad and mum and brother and aunts and several people have been to see. I haven't. I haven't ever been able to see. It's not easy to get to. But they've been and they bought, they took photographs for her. And so she had these photographs um, to see where her Sam, Sam was, was buried. You know, I think of him often. I think, what would he have been like? You know, what would he have thought of us? What would he have um, thought of all the things we were doing? You know, would he have been, would he have been a, a, a hands-on granddad? Would he have been stern? Would he have been strict? Would he have been loved? Well, my granny was just wonderful. So I presume that he would be wonderful too. As I say, I was her only granddaughter, so maybe I'm a bit biased. But, you know, he'd fought and died for our freedom. And John Maxwell Ed Edmund said, when you go home, tell them of us and say, your, uh, and say, for your tomorrow, we give our today. You know, as Christians, I know someone who died for our freedom too. God sent his only son to die on a cruel cross so that we might have eternal freedom in heaven one day. In Acts chapter 13, 38 to 39, it says, Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. This is the ultimate freedom. You know, and as we remember and give thanks for those who've sacrificed so much for us, just take time to think about the freedom that Christ has given to us. By, by dying on the cross for us. And I pray that maybe this Remembrance Sunday, as you think, as we take that moment silence, as we as we pay tribute to our fallen soldiers and to those who have who are still serving, that you would, this Remembrance Day, trust Christ as your saviour, the one who gave the ultimate sacrifice for you. You know, just outside, literally from the window, I can see a war memorial. Hopefully again, the picture will be up here. And it's got a cross and poppies and people in the village tend to it. And on Sunday, there'll be a little gathering around it to remember those from the village who were lost. And every day I look out and I see that cross. And not only does it remind me of those amazing men and women who gave their lives, but it reminds me of the cross of, that Christ died on. Every day in life, I see that and I am reminded that Christ died for us and gave us that ultimate freedom. And my... What I want to live with you today is may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, they fought to bring peace. They fought to bring freedom. But, you know, in this troubled world we live in, the only ultimate way to have peace and freedom is to know Christ as your personal saviour. If I can help you to do that, if I can help you to understand, if I can help you to um get to grips with any of the things that I share with you from knitting right through to, to spiritual things please just get in touch Ruth loves to knit at gmail.com and I would be more than happy to talk with you about those things I pray that you'll have a really good couple of weeks I'm sorry if I was even more rambly and longer than normal I hope you've you've taken this in spurts <laughs> fits and spurts I hope that you've got some maybe some inspiration for knits um, thank you again for all your lovely messages. We're coming out. We're, we'll be fine. Um, and I just um, 
hope that um, over the next few weeks you'll find some time, some quiet time to just get down with your knitting and just to think about the things maybe that I've just shared. All right, keep on knitting. God bless. Keep safe. And thanks again for watching. Bye.